around like all the saints. Couch a lot, creep up on a nigga, make me faint. I like when the buds are purple, looking like it's paint. Whipping through the clouds like I'm. Thanks for rolling up. I'm Tubla Marley, and this is Certified Pothead. I'm smoking on one of my um nighttime spliffs. You know what we about to do, Bird Club. We about to jump into these cannabis conspiracy theories which i like to call cannabis conspiracy theories today's theory involves edgar Allan poe have you ever been halfway through an edgar Allan poe story and thought this dude definitely had to be smoking something interesting no well hear me out i've got a theory as well as one of poe's gothic plot twists what if all his stories were actually about cannabis i mean seriously think about it his characters are paranoid anxious introspective and hallucinating basically like any writer who's ever decided to take a creative journey with a little herbal inspiration well, don't go scrolling nowhere chill with me i know you're thinking i'm taking the long puff down a short alley but walk with me bro we're going to get there first the riddle a twist and a turn words on the page i build up a world with a pen as my stage i craft every sentence revise every line to captivate readers what role let's start with the obvious poe's stories are dark we're talking deeper than the bottom of a coffee cup at 3 a.m kind of dark but every now and then you get a strange sense that maybe just maybe there's an odd calm beneath all that gloom like in the telltale heart where our dear friend and narrator is so chilled out one minute he could be a yoga instructor and the next He's got paranoia levels higher than a cat that's been spooked by the vacuum. What's causing all these mood swings? I'd bet it's something that rhymes with bananabis. It's like when you're riding high on creativity one second, convinced you're writing the next great American novel, and then next you're crying into your laptop because your characters have staged a rebellion and refuse to follow your plot outlines. Post characters, they live that roller coaster every single page. Speaking of the telltale heart, Let's talk paranoia. I mean, the guy in the story literally freaks out over a heartbeat. Something he's convinced everyone else can hear. Who wrote paranoia so well, it's almost like he had first-hand experience. Maybe he wasn't haunted by a creepy heart, but more like the sound of his own thoughts spiraling out of control after one too many hits of the green. Does that sound familiar, writers? When we overthink a plot hole so much that we start hearing our characters' voices arguing with us, basically the same vibe here's another riddle i'm a place you know well and perhaps you despise deadlines approach but still no surprise my cursor blinks waiting with no end in sight what am i where authors battle each night poe wasn't just the master of the macabre or macabre if you want to say it that way he also had a way of getting seriously introspect like those moments when you're Staring out of a window, contemplating your existence, but you're also supposed to be editing. Take the Raven, for instance. The narrator spends an entire night spiraling into existential dread over a bird that keeps squawking nevermore. It's basically the 19th century version of you wondering if your latest plot twist was too much while staring blankly at your blinking cursor. Now, if I didn't know any better, I'd say Pope might have been staring out of his own window just a little too high and thinking what does it all mean the raven probably just a projection of his inner monologue after a late night sesh with the herbs ever have one of those nights where your to-do list turns into a existential crisis about life death and everything in between yeah that's the raven for you Poe's stories are packed with hallucinations that would make even the most care for blah 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 words make the most caffeine feud writer look like a lightweight take the tale of the house of words people words the fall of the house of usher for example roderick usher is so disoriented that he can't even tell if the house is falling apart or if it's just in his mind sound familiar maybe that's not the crumbling mansion at all just an overworked brain that's been up for 48 hours straight few by snacks and whatever poe had growing in his secret garden the hallucinations in his stories feel like the little literary little literary people i might have to stop talking all together literary equivalent of what you're editing at 2 a.m i swear that you saw your character walk off the page 
That's right, too much creative juice can sometimes have your mind playing tricks on you, making your manuscript seem like it's coming alive. It have convinced you wake up to find your antagonist rewriting your dialogue out of sheer spite. Real time. Though I'm just a thought, I'm a seed that can bloom. I strike when you least expect, fill in the room. For me, books are born with plots and suspense. What am I, driving your creative defense? One thing Poe understood, perhaps better than any of us, is obsession. I mean, the dude's characters are obsessed with everything. In the Telltale Heart, the narrator... <laughs> Don't be agreeing sometime, my peeps. In the Telltale Heart, the narrator becomes fixated on a heartbeat. Kind of like when you're editing the same sentence for the 50th time because it doesn't feel right before you know it. Staring down at the page thinking, did this even make sense anyway? But can you stop? No, of course not. Writing, like Poe's narratives, often spirals into obsession. We've all been there writing and rewriting, going down the rabbit hole of perfecting a paragraph until your brain starts playing tricks on you. But Poe's version was a little bit more deadly. In the literary world, obsessive thoughts can lead to a character's breakdowns. In Poe's world, well, it's less about bad reviews and more about murder. Ever notice how time seems to wrap when you're really in a good writing session? One minute, you're just sitting down, starting a few pages, and the next you know six hours have passed. The coffee's cold and your pet is looking at you like you joined the cult. Poe definitely played with the idea of time distortion. In the pit in the pendulum, time seems to stretch endlessly and the protagonist watches a pendulum slowly descend toward him. Much like how I feel when staring down at the deadline. Cannabis is known to mess with your perception of time. Just like the moment when you think you got all day to finish your manuscript only to look at the clock and realize that it's already midnight. I'm convinced Poe had a similar experience while writing, except instead of looming deadlines, it was a literal swinging blade. It's all the same in the end. Here's another rhythm. I dwell in the quiet, alone with my muse. I make up whole worlds that others can use. My friends live in ink, their tales I extend. Who am I writing from beginning to end? Poe's characters are often isolated, trapped, or otherwise trying to escape something. Does that sound familiar? It's basically... The life of every writer ever, whether they're physically locked in their writing's room or mentally escaping into the worlds they've created. Isolation is just part of the deal. In the, pit, in the pendulum, the protagonist is literally trapped and waiting for something, anything to save them. Which is exactly how writers feel every time they hit writer's block. But maybe the real isolation Poe was writing about wasn't just literal. Maybe it's the kind of isolation a writer feels when they're deep into their work. Avoiding the outside world and living off caffeine and sheer willpower. That was wrong. Sheer, sheer, sheer willpower. Sheer willpower. That's how you say that. Poe was probably just writing about the same kind of creative escape we all seek. Except, you know, with more dungeon box. So maybe Poe's characters weren't exactly reaching for the snacks in the middle of their existential breakdown. But can we talk about how heightened... The senses are in his stories. Every sound, every creak, every eerie sensation is described in such detail. It's almost like Poe was writing from an altered state of mind. I wouldn't be surprised if he got the munchies mid-writing sessions and decided to channel that extra sensory awareness into his stories. If his characters were reaching for snacks, though, I bet they'd be opting for something gothic like dark chocolate or maybe spooky-themed potato chips. Poe potato chips if you will and no i won't apologize for that pun it was dark and twisted as the tale by edgar Allan poe so was poe secretly writing about cannabis i'll let you be the judge but the next time you find yourself deep in one of his stories just imagine him taking a thoughtful puff and whispering nevermore into the misty night would it be too far-fetched probably not the answers to the riddles author blank page idea novelist see you on the next one